Chuck. It's P. Samples. The revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series. The revolution will be digitized. Oh, yeah. Real Talk Session Series. The revolution will be Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Taryn, the founder and content creator of the Real Talk Session Series. Thank you all for the love and support. It definitely is appreciated. Uh, today, I'm going back home, a.k.a. back to my alma mater, Morgan State University. And I had the honor of being with the, the phenomenal woman of Evolve. Ladies, how you doing today? Good, yeah. I'm well, I'm well. So can you both begin with telling us your name, major, and your career aspirations? My name is Aya. I'm a senior accounting major here at Morgan State. And when I do graduate, I do plan to go to graduate school okay. and eventually open my own CPA firm in Nigeria. Okay, all right, all right. Hi everyone, my name is Whitney Bassa. I'm currently a business administration major with a minor in psychology here at Morgan State University. After graduating, I plan to go to grad school, but not to further pursue business, but to go to a different route, which will be public health. Okay, cool. So when y'all make it big, make sure you look out for little people like me, all right, cool. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So um, you ladies are part of a wonderful organization called Evolve. Um, when I was at Morgan State University here from 2010 to 2013, we just had the Morgan Mile. But hearing about the Evolve program, it sounds like it's amazing, definitely. So can you all let everyone know about Evolve, what it stands for, and also what its purpose is? So I'll start off. Um for those who don't know, Evolve stands for Elevating Voices of Leadership, Virtue, and Excellence. And it's an organization here on campus for young ladies like ourselves. And the whole purpose of Evolve is to help promote leadership, womanhood, and civility. Evolve's purpose is to up, not uproot, but upbring ladies who come from different, different backgrounds and different mm -hmm. homes because everyone grew up differently so it helps us like academically and profess like the professional career aspect like every single aspect like some people don't have sisters they didn't grow up with sisters they didn't grow yeah. up with their mothers so they come over here and like we're like we're just like a whole nother family we're mm -hmm. close-knit so that's what i really love about evolve and i hope that everyone like upcoming like incoming freshmen for the fall semester, they join Evolve. Okay, yeah, and that's great too because not everyone has that support system mm -hmm. and that representation matters of having a feminine presence and whatnot and the bond and sisterhood. And I think that's definitely something that we need in this world. So with Evolve, like what are some of the most memorable experiences for you all in the program? For me, I've been in Evolve since freshman year, unofficially, okay. but I really joined sophomore year. So and I'm, you're a senior, correct? I'm a senior. Okay, okay. So I've been around Evolve. I didn't do the application at first, but it's like, because I just didn't feel like doing the work. Mm -hmm. But I always came around. I was always there. But the most memorable experience for me is when we went um, White River Water Rafting. Oh, yeah. With everyone else. It was just, like, really nice. It was like we all had to work together to, like, reach a common goal. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I've been with Evolve, I want to say this is my second year. Yes, it is my second year. And the most memorable moment that I've had with Evolve was when we went overnight to um, camping. It was a retreat. Yes, we went to a retreat, and it was away from campus. And what made that a memorable experience is that, for one, our cell phones didn't work, so it had us. We Get had to you enter. off the world, <laughs> the, the online world, into the real world. Exactly. Yes, use so that interpersonal communication. Yes. It was great. So the interpersonal communication with everybody was something that I really admired because, you know, the retreat created a safe space for everyone to just talk it out, for mm -hmm. everyone to connect and, you know, just to let down your walls and just know that you have a support system. So that to me was great. Yeah. And one of the great things about the programs here, like Morgan Mile Evolve, is that they provide excursions and a lot of those excursions provide experiences that people normally don't have. I went whitewater rafting for the first time with Morgan, uh, with the Morgan Mile. So it's dope that you guys are having those same experiences because it's needed. Some people don't even leave their hometown. So, you know, having those experiences that opens you up, it allows you to be more cultured, definitely. So that's something that, you know, is take advantage of it, you know? Um, so being at HBCU, it's something that to me is kind of sacred and it adds value to the black community. But a lot of people on the outside, they don't understand it. And necessarily, they have a lot of assumptions. So what does it feel like attending an HBCU? And like, what 
do you enjoy most about being here at Morgan State University? So as a senior in high school, I wasn't really, wasn't really looking for like a HBCU or a PWI. I was looking for a school. Mm -hmm. So it's coming to Morgan, at first it wasn't like the best experience, but like over time, like making friends and joining organizations, I eventually loved it. And most of us that do like attend Morgan State University, we all have the same background. We all mm -hmm. go on Twitter, it's like, oh, my mom did this. I'm like, my mom does this all the time. Yeah. And like my sister and everything. So we all have the same background. So it's like really nice to be able to relate to someone else just like yourself. Yeah. And what about yourself? Being in an HBCU has exposed me to the privilege that black people have. In a sense, we don't think about it because we're like, privilege? It doesn't make no sense. Yeah. But I think we do have a sense of privilege because not everybody can make it to school. And mm -hmm. just because it's an HBCU does not mean you're getting any less of an education than anybody else that's at a PWI. Yeah. And for Morgan, I appreciate the fact that um, people here really work hard for what they believe in. Like, mm -hmm. you can't find nobody here without a purpose or passion for something yeah. and i like the fact that morgan creates little platforms that just opens little doors even if it's just an organization where it gives these people a voice to speak out and you know stand for something so that's what i like about yeah morgan. definitely and touching on the privilege thing i see what you're saying because as black people we do have certain privileges to be in certain areas so say for instance we have different conversations about hair or whatnot or we have inside jokes whereas some people won't have jokes exactly some people don't know what Beijing is, you know, the stuff that with the, the, the black hair, you know, like people don't know about that. Some people don't know about tracks, but we have those inside jokes. That's one of the things that I love about being HBCU and the black empowerment and the culture and whatnot. Being that is Women's History Month, happy Women's History Month to you both. Thank you. So keep it on task with that. Um, who are some women that inspire you and why? This is long. I have a lot of women that inspire me for different reasons because mm -hmm. they're all in different fields. I'll start off with my mom. My mom is very inspirational to me. I came to America when I was like eight and a half. So I grew up in Cameroon, which is a country in Africa. Okay. And just growing up with my mom, seeing how hard working she is, that is inspiration for myself. Because growing up in a single parent household is not always the easiest thing to do. But she proves that like it's doable and it's not even a problem. Mm -hmm. Like she fills the holes when there are holes. So for that and just her push for me to go to, you know, above and beyond, that's inspirational. Another person who's pretty inspirational is Amber Wilson. And she's a coordinator for Evolve. Okay, um, okay. To me, she's inspirational inspirational because she has um a radar for no bs like her radar is really slim and for that yep. reason it's like okay i'll come to her i'm crying complaining and she's like okay she'll give me that time but then she shuts it down yeah. so now how do we figure it gotta get so, you right exactly so for that reason amber is really inspirational to me um another one is ashley williams she's inspirational she's also evolve coordinator because with ashley she's very candid like she's open to the tea yeah that's not easy to do for everybody and just to know that she can just be very open and vulnerable is something that is great to me and last but not least i'm another person who's very like inspirational to me her name is miss georgia sawyer i worked with her and the reason why she's very inspirational to me is just because she is a boss like in everything mm -hmm. that she does and currently what she's she's in a phd program i believe and for that reason it's like what she does and what she's studying i want to do it too just to see her passion and her drive for people and just the well-being of others is really inspirational it just makes me want to you know do better and continue to surround myself with these wonderful ladies because they have qualities that i hope one day i you know acquire so yes okay and you will acquire it because we put it out there in the universe yes. right manifestation amen a woman who inspires me is my mom of course because without her i don't know where i would be she works to no like she works from morning to night she made sure I have, I'm set. Like, she might not have, she could give me the last $20 in her wallet. Mm -hmm. Like, she made sure I'm good. My sister is good. My brother is good. My dad is good. Like, I really care about my mom. And I'm so, I'm just so happy that she's there for us. Mm -hmm. So, she inspires me a lot. Another person who inspires me is my neighbor. Her name is Barbara Forbes. She's been helping me since high school. Like, she still calls me every day. Okay. Like, how are you? Where are you coming home? Do you do this? Do you do that? I'm in Morgan. Do you want to come see me? I'm at the Armory. Mm -hmm. Like, she really checks up on me, and she makes sure I'm set. Like, she's like, you need to do this. You need to do that. Like, are they doing this? You need to go to this. So I really like her because I really love her because she's, like, my number one supporter with yeah. my mom. So those are two who, who inspire me the most. 
Okay, cool. So you're a senior and you're a sophomore, correct? So what are some of the biggest lessons you learned from freshman year to now? Do not procrastinate. <laughs> yeah. Do not. I'm like, I've, I've dealt with that a lot. Freshman year, I didn't know it was going to be that bad. The freshman year is real. That's when reality hits you. I didn't know it was that bad. I, when I was supposed to be writing this paper, I was, what I was doing? I was watching Grey's Anatomy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I'm like, I would say do not procrastinate, and we have a lot of resources to our advantage. Mm-hmm. So really use that because we're paying for it. Yeah. So really use that. Join organizations, make friends, because that's how you you make connections. Yeah. So really use all your resources till there's no other. And one of the great things that I like about the Office of Residence Life and Housing at Morgan is that they actually have academic services within the actual residence halls with tutors. And there's a ton of students who are always supportive. You a tutor? Shout out to the tutors, AEP. I see you right there. But like, it's something that, you know, it empowers the students to take control of the academic uh, future and help their peers. So that's one thing I really like, the mentorship aspect of things here. So the question was, What's the biggest lessons I've learned from freshman year to now? Since I'm a sophomore, Mm -hmm. I've learned a few things. Don't stress out too much (laughs) because I'm the type to overly stress, and sometimes it's just not that deep. So literally, do your best, study, and then let God finish the rest. That's really it. That's all I would say. I'm big on mental health awareness, and you just brought up a good point of don't stress over stuff. So what are some of the tactics you all use to self-care to get that little woo-saw when school's getting too crazy? Believe it or not, I go to the barber shop. I just okay, like okay. getting my hair cut. Okay. She got so, more waves than me. I had like six good <laughs> waves on the side, you know? <laughs> um, usually... I always, well, people like to say, if you look good, you feel good. To an extent. Yep. To an extent, to you extent, will. Yeah. So for me, the starting point is let's go get a haircut with some crazy designs and lines in it. It makes okay. you feel good. So when I look at it, I'm like, hmm, this is cute. Okay, now let's recenter. So that's just one of the self care things. Talking, sometimes crying is self care. It's for needed. Me. You got to get like, it out. It helps because once I cry, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Maybe not. I can think a it's little like, bit. Think about all the experiences, the pain, everything that's flowing out, and it's going into the universe. That's it. You know, it's better that way. I like yeah. how you put it. So that is self care. I have. I need to do more. That's a fact. I definitely need with to time you learn. Trust me, I, <laughs> I learned so. at twenty nine. So well, yeah, it takes some time to get there. Yes, but okay. at least you're actively going towards that's taking true. care of yourself. Mm-hmm. So what about yourself? It took me a long time to realize that. Because I would just bottle everything up mm-hmm. to get to my my reaching point, And I really break down. But I've learned to just be like, okay, I didn't do this well. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again later. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go treat myself because I feel like I did almost a good Every job. once in a while, you got to treat <laughs> yourself, though. Every once in a while. Job. So I go to the mall. I just go to this, this candy store. And I just buy a whole bunch of candy. Okay. They're expensive. Bastard. Are you bowling? Like, are you, how you in college bowling? <laughs> They're expensive, but I still buy it because I feel like I deserve it. Okay. And I was like, I get that, and I come back to my room, and I feel so good, and I take a nap. And then I'll come back. I'm like, okay, I'm I was try the nap again. king. Yes. I was like, and I try again. I'll just try again. But I'm like, okay, but I wouldn't stress myself too much because I've done a lot of that and it gets me nowhere. Okay. Okay. So. Being that you guys are actually here, you know, we have great shows like Grownish with uh, Yara Shahidi. They talk about a lot of different issues. So, like, what are some of the issues you see with your peers? And then let's, on a flip side, let's offer some solutions because I'm all about being solution oriented instead of just talking about the issue. So, what do you think are some of the biggest issues amongst your peers currently? So, I would say that one of the biggest issues that I've seen among my peers is um, talking a lot, but not really acting upon what you're talking about like let's Mm -hmm. say at the beginning of the month everyone always has a goal there's always something that needs to be done so it's like because for me i like goals trust me by the end of the month nothing is really done it's like i've Mm -hmm. skipped over everything so just being that consistency is something that we lack because we're always talking something is wrong we're talking but no one is really acting or no one has taken the initiative to step up and Mm -hmm. act so just that lack of 
leadership because we all have those qualities among us but it's just who's going to take that first step and go put in either an application or go put in like you know a petition like hey we want change and then we'll support because we're really big on support mm -hmm. but we just need that one person to jump out and do it and then yeah. the rest of us will come in so that's yeah. one thing i feel like we could do better with and that's a tough thing actually starting you know mm -hmm. and it goes back to what you said earlier procrastination you know i was notorious for procrastinating but once you actually make that first step, things just flow. It's like a snowball. It just goes and goes. You get more momentum and whatnot. But, you know, y'all got it. You know, I, I believe in your generation. It's the matter of, you know, putting action behind the word. Right. You know? We're going to wrap up. But my main thing is always providing women with a megaphone to talk to men in society because men always claim women aren't talking. But now here's your time and opportunity. Mm -hmm. So if you can say one thing to men and society, what would it be and why? Everything is not that deep. It's not that serious. Relax. Everything will fall in place. Be patient. Mm -hmm. It's not a race. Like, just take your time. Okay. Oh, so one thing I would like to tell the men in society or just society as a whole is... Um, Cut it out with the lack of communication because we understand everyone goes through something and we understand people are at different places in life and, you know, different stands. But I think it's very important when you communicate effectively. That mm -hmm. is my pet peeve when people cannot communicate effectively because then it's like I always tell my friends, I'm only going to be in your life with the amount of space that you allowed me to be in. So if you create a box for me, I'm going to try to squeeze my big self in this little box. Mm -hmm. But if you create, like, a massive room, I'm going to try, you know, to fill up this massive room. So my thing is just, like, you, we both know our flaws. Like, I know my flaws, and you would know your flaws as well. So the most important thing is just to be, like, just communicate that. That's it. Because I'm not looking for somebody who's perfect, like, friends-wise, whatever. I'm not looking mm -hmm. for perfect. But communicating is really really important because how am I supposed to be a friend to you if you're going through something if you're not telling me you're going through something some to some extent I could guess like hey my friend is not okay yeah. but I should also just need you to talk to me that's literally it definitely I agree with you with communication communication is something that's major and often a missing link in a lot of different things especially relationships problems if you just talk th then there wouldn't be half as many issues, miscommunications, et cetera. And through effective communication, a lot of great ideas come from that. Conflicts get resolved and Easily. there's no misunderstandings at all. But some people are afraid of hurting people's feelings, et cetera. No, get it out. Talk effectively. And the main thing is to always come from a place of understanding, respect and care. You know, you don't have to throw trash on somebody or bad talk, you know. It's about respect. That's all. Give respect that you want and you'll get it. That's so, true. all right. So thank you ladies so much for having me here. Shout out to Evolve, Morgan State University, Ops Residence Life. Shout out to Dr. Gwen and all the staff. So uh, can you just tell the people how they can reach Evolve and then also you two individually? Uh, you can reach Evolve on Instagram at MSU underscore Evolve. And my personal Instagram is three underscores A zero M I D E. And you should follow me on Instagram at the underscore Whitney Bassa. So it's W H I T N E Y B A S S A H. All right. Thank you so much. And you will see them in the future, you know, doing big things. So don't worry about it. <laughs> what you talking about? What you talking about? Do that all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So thank you for watching Real Talk Session Series. The revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series. Bye, the revolution will be digitized. <laughs> Session series, the revolution will be digitized. World Talk Session series, the revolution will be digitized. World Talk Session series. It's Pete Sample, the revolution will be digitized.